You know, I've never been much into the survival horror genre. For me, games that rely on jump scares and buckets of blood are missing a certain je ne sais quoi that more psychological hauntings have. And as a biologist, things like zombies have never really done it for me. But you know what does do it for me? So I figured I'd do everyone a favor and let the cat out of the bag. Resident Evil and a whole lot of other games aren't killing zombies, right? You heard me. The classic method of killing zombies by shooting them square in the head doesn't track. There are some glaring flaws with this strategy, the greatest being that it fails to take zombie biology into account. That being said, it's not as if the Undead Legion is completely invincible. If you're trapped with a zombie and you only have a single bullet to your name, there's a surefire way to take it out and keep it from ever getting back up again. Well, hypothetically speaking. Scientifically speaking. This probably won't work in-game, but if some real-life Umbrella Corporation ever got up to hijinks, this method should be sound. Now, to properly explain why the current MO is wrong and why we should change our tactics, we first need to define our baseline. What are we dealing with here? How do zombies in Resident Evil work? Luckily, we have a lot of solid information about what makes this brand of zombie tick. The T-Virus, a highly infectious disease that causes loss of brain functions, cardiovascular shutdown, and necrosis of the flesh. The T-Virus isn't actually reanimating anything. It's just shutting down the body's functions and sending the remaining husk into a primal state driven by base instincts. This is vital information. We know that these zombies are still connected to the general laws of biological creatures. They're not being spawned by magic or forces greater than ourselves. As such, they're fair game for the application of scientific logic. You may be thinking, scientifically speaking, isn't a shot to the head a pretty solid strategy? And you wouldn't be wrong. Generally, a headshot is going to spell a bad time for any living thing. However, we need to dig a bit deeper into what exactly happens when the T-Virus takes root. Umbrella's notes help a bit here, but we'll need to integrate observational data into our zombie theory as well. We know that the virus causes brain functions to drastically decrease, but let's refine our understanding of that. The general behavior of a zombie is entirely driven by the instinct to consume. Their capacity to act is very small. Generally, they can only stagger towards potential victims and attack. Some zombies have been seen speaking broken sentences and performing simple tasks like opening doors. But due to the rarity of these occurrences, we can assume that these are not widespread behaviors, and simply attribute them to earlier stages of infection. We also know that zombies do not recoil from pain, but they can be disoriented by flashbangs. And what can we do with this information? We can begin to understand the brain. The zombie brain, that is. Since it's the general target when it comes to killing the undead, knowing what's going on in that grey goo will help us understand which methods of execution should work and which shouldn't. To help us in our zombie study, we'll split the brain into a few basic sections, as well as making a distinction between the forebrain and the hindbrain. First, let's take a look at the widely accepted target on a zombie, the frontal lobe and, to a lesser extent, the parietal lobe. The frontal lobe is actually one of the most advanced parts of our brains, and the development of it seen in humans is only really comparable to other highly intelligent animals like dolphins and apes. Complex thoughts, emotions, and personality are all attributed to this hunk of meat. Sadly, we can be pretty sure that this part of the brain isn't highly involved in dictating a zombie's actions, as these functions are all but lost after the T-Virus takes over. It follows, then, that we shouldn't waste bullets on this part of the brain. Just beyond the frontal lobe, we have the parietal lobe. If you aimed for the forehead, a bullet would likely tear through here as well. Because the parietal lobe handles perception, destroying this area should cause disorientation. That's a bit more helpful, but it doesn't stop them dead in their tracks. The parietal lobe also processes senses like pain. However, we can clearly see that zombies do not recoil in response to damage, which means this section of the brain is already functioning far below normal levels. Further down, at the back of the forebrain, we have the occipital lobe, and despite being just about the furthest you can get from the eyes, it controls sight. As another sensory center, taking out this chunk of a zombie brain should work to slow them down by cutting or damaging their sight. But it still isn't that one-hit KO sweet spot we're looking for. The temporal lobe, located at the sides of the brain, is a similar dead end. It deals with hearing, but its other functions like language interpretation and organization are lost for zombies, making it an unnecessary part. That wraps up the forebrain, and judging by what we've learned, the T-Virus has already severely ravaged these areas. 
With their functions already running at such abysmal levels, shooting here isn't going to do us much good. And we see this in-game. Zombies can take a few bullets to the head before going down, and even then, they might still get back up. At this point, more complex brain structures are proving to be unnecessary, so we really shouldn't aim for any of the parts covered so far. But fear not, sweet viewer. The brain is necessary for every single bit of our existence, so the answer is still hidden somewhere within. We just have to move away from the forebrain and travel a bit further down, all the way to the brainstem and the cerebellum. Now, these two pieces are much like the foundations of the brain. They're the first building blocks of the entire organ, and they handle the most basic yet most vital functions of the body. In essence, they are what connect our mind and our physical form. The cerebellum sits just below the back of the forebrain, and is responsible for structuring voluntary motion as well as maintaining our sense of balance and posture. Despite making up only a tenth of the brain, it contains about half of our neurons, a quantity that speaks to its importance to much of the evolved life on Earth, as the cerebellum is a staple component among them. It receives sensory data from our brain and coordinates our entire body to react to the world around us, aka step one of being alive. It receives said data from the other part of the hindbrain, the brainstem. The brainstem is the ultimate communicator, carrying sensory data to the brain and sending commands out to the body in return. Everything runs through the brainstem. Without it, we would be blind, deaf, mute thoughts trapped in a flaccid flesh prison that we have no control over. And that, of course, makes it the perfect target. Even with the T-virus's uncanny ability to allow humans at the edge of death to function, cutting off the connection between the brain and the body is going to get the job done. Especially if you tear through the cerebellum in the same shot, which is definitely possible with how cozy the two are. Even a small amount of damage to the cerebellum can cause tremors, an inability to coordinate, and sudden collapse. A bullet should be more than enough to do irreversible damage. With that, we have our answer. If you're trapped in a room with a zombie and a single bullet, you should aim for the back of the neck or the bridge of the nose, as both will send a bullet straight through the brainstem and cerebellum. This cuts off the communication between what's left of the mind and the body, and will effectively render a zombie unable to move, whether it's still clinging to life or fully dead. And that, my friends, is one killer strategy. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little something along the way. Theoretical biology is one of my passions, and I'd love to make more videos like this in the future. Tell me what you think in the comments below, maybe like, maybe subscribe, whatever you're feeling. You can also follow us on Twitter, at DigiDreamClub, to stay up to date on our latest. And most importantly, Leon Kennedy, if you're listening to this, please call me, you beautiful, beautiful man. You can pass my number along to Ada too if you want. Actually, please give her my number. You're both so gorgeous and...